Do you think that is better? It is better po na dapat sa national government ang humawak po nitong batas na national land use Not everybody act. agrees with you. Well, not everybody uh, agrees ako, with you. Ako, I don't well, agree. Kung yan po yung inyong premise, bakit hindi lang po natin tulungan itong mga maliliit na farmers, bigyan na lang po sila ng puhunan para magkaroon po sila ng uh, maging mechanized na po yung kanilang farming Binibigyan stock. po. Well, Oo, then instead na bibilin po, po yung kanilang mga lupa, pabayaan na lang po natin sila na isaka yung kanilang lupain at Meron tutulungan po. na lang po sila na, Meron po. na para Meron hindi po. na po makonvert, hindi na po makonvert yung kanila pong mga farm into subdivision, into commercial Uh, area and what have you. Eh. So I have no guilt to any rice farmers. I, I'm not All saying, the money that came from the rice tarification I'm not saying, were na kayo given po back to the rice farmers. I wrote that law. I know. Ako because po yan... I studied the difference between us and the rice farmers of Vietnam. And this is the reason kung bakit po talaga kailangan ma-push na po natin itong National Land Use Act. At hindi ko po alam kung bakit hanggang ngayon, apat na presidente na po ang dumaan at hindi pa rin po itong mapasapasa. Hindi ko po alam kung bakit. Ano pong ginagawa ng DA na yung po mga farmland ay nakukonvert na po sa mag, nag, naging residential area na po at commercial area? I don't feel any guilt to the small farmers. All the money that came from the rice tarification law were given to the small farmers owning two hectares and below. So how do we identify those small farmers? Paano they po have na, a list. Do you have po a list? They so paano po ninyo pinipili ng DA? No, they have paano, a list. I know po. Paano po pinipili uh, kung sino po ang maging recipient two nitong pera na galing po sa rice tarification? How mga farmland po doon na nakonvert na po? Ikaw is a city. Regardless, oh. ang pinag-usap pa po natin, yung mga uh, farmland po na nakonvert na po sa isang subdivision o commercial. But they allow that in cities and capital they towns. They po, allow conversion po, in cities and capital towns because if they buy your land, they buy it expensive and they you can reinvest the money and you will make more money than planting on those lands. Okay. I remember we have, uh, when I was young, we have a uh, 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 chicken, a big chicken farm in Muntinlupa. But Muntinlupa became a 60 So we finally develop our chicken farm because it it is eight, eight hectares. We will make more money than in uh, far in farming. So it's it's an investment decision for these people. If somebody will buy your land at a bigger amount, maybe uh, you can sell it and buy another land in, that is cheaper somewhere else and build your farm there. Hindi so, po ganun I think mami. it's the thinking of this you have to to understand uh, agriculture as a business also uh, i'm not a businessman but i can understand agriculture po, to sell your land at a higher price and be able to buy a bigger piece of land with that same money in uh, less prime places then you will do it kaya nga po ito pong tanong ko po sa ating mga taga da ano po ang ginagawa nila sa ganitong nangyaring masamang sistema na paliit na paliit It's, po ang ating farmland? Sorry po, madam, ha? Yeah. Na hindi lang po sa Kawayan, sa Isabela, I, po, I, hindi sa maraming po mga probinsya, na marami na po mga subdivision na nagsilipa na... And where will the people live if you don't build subdivision? Marami po mga lugar na pwede pong pagtayuan ng subdivision. Huwag lang po i-take over yung mga farms. Kasi nga po, kuminsan yung mga farmers, dahil sila po ay nag they're being taken advantage po of. No. Lalo na po meron tinatawag na rice tarification. So mura po yung mga bigas na dumarating dito, they cannot compete. And then papasok po ito mga negosyante at mag-offer ng pera para bilhin ang kanilang mga lupain. Of course, walang choice po yung mga farmers kung hindi ibenta na lang kanilang lupa sapagkat meron na po tinatawag na rice tarification. I wrote the rice tarification ah, law. Yun? You know, uh, we wrote the rice tarification law because in 20, in 2018, uh, the price of rice rose to almost 50 to 60 pesos per kilo. And that is the only time President Duterte became unpopular because rice is a, a political crop. When nagmamahal ang rice, nagiging unpopular ang president. And uh, 
the World Bank, we signed that WTO agreement in 1995, and they gave us 25 years to be competitive, but we failed to be competitive after 25 years. And if we don't open the lib or liberalize the importation of rice, they will bring down our credit rating, and we have plenty of loans abroad, and we have to pay higher interest for those loans so it will be a loss to the philippine government so what i did when they asked me to to write the rice tarification law i gave all the money from the collection of rice tariff to the small farmers 10 billion for the rice competitiveness enhancement RC. fund 5 billion for mechanization, 3 billion for seeds, 1 billion for loans, 1 billion for training. And anything above 10 billion that was collected, it was given to the rice farmers owning 2 hectares and below, 5,000 each, 1.6 million farmers. So that is 8 billion. So a total of 18 billion, which is the collection of the rice tarification law na rice tariff. Alam ko po yan. I don't feel any guilt to the small farmers. All the money that came from the rice tarification law were given to the small farmers owning two hectares and below. So how do we identify those small farmers? Paano they have po a list. Do you have po a list? They so have paano a po list. ninyo pinipili ng DA? No, they have paano, a list. Ay, no po. Paano po pinipili uh, kung sino po ang maging recipient two nitong pera na galing po sa Rice tarification. How uh, are they, they being identified? They have a list of farmers owning two hectares and below. So, oh, meron po... Magpapalista ka sa kanila. They have a... RSBSA. RSBSA. Okay. Uh -oh. So, I have no guilt to any rice farmers. I, I'm not All saying... All the money that came from the rice tarification... I'm not saying... Po ...were given po guilty. back to the rice farmers. I wrote that law. I know. Ako because po yan... I studied the difference between us and the rice farmers of Vietnam. The rice farmers of Vietnam, they produce their palay at 6 pesos per kilo. We in the Philippines, we produce our palay at 12 pesos per kilo. The 6 pesos difference, I look at it. And 350 is labor. That means we're not mechanized. And 250 is the productivity of the seed. So there's something wrong with our seed. So when I wrote that rice competitiveness enhancement fund, I gave 5 billion to mechanization and 3 billion to seed distribution and also to train them to do the same seeds with their own farm. I, I am teaching them to learn how to do Inbred seedlings. Uh, okay. Are you finished po, ma'am? Yes, yes. Okay. Let's go back po dun sa food security. Alam ko po na meron pong tinatawag na Rice Comprehensive Enhancement Fund. Rice Competitive Competitive Enhancement okay. Fund. Enhancement Fund. Nasabi niyo po sa akin, so dapat may 2 hectares yung farmer para sila po ay mag-qualify dyan. Okay na po tayo dyan. However, hindi pa rin po talaga tunay na nasasagot yung pong katanungan ko po na ano pong ginagawa ng DA na yung pong mga farmland ay nakoconvert na po sa mag, nag, nagiging residential area na po at commercial area. We need the residential area and the commercial area to, com to improve the quality of lives of our people. Ang, ang alam nyo, it's not the amount of farmlands. It's the efficiency of using these farmlands. Alam nyo, pag maganda ang seeds mo at mechanized ka, even with smaller area of farmlands, you can do better Kaya and po, earn more. Kaya, Kaya nga, we're teaching the farmers to do mechanization and to, do, and to plant better seedlings and to teach them that they have to operate their farm as a small business so they will make more money. You know, okay. hindi, naman, <laughs> hindi naman ito komo malitan lupa mo. Kaya we're organizing them into cooperatives para may economies of scale sila. Kasi kung 2, two, two hectares kayo, uh, mag-organize kayo, tatlong farmer, then you have 60 hectares. And okay. then you mechanize, 
hindi ka matatapos sa palay. Uh, bibigyan ka ng filmek ng uh, uh, ano tawag dito, dryer and milling. So, ang production mo, hindi na palay na baba, babarating ka ng middleman, kundi mapoproduce mo na hanggang